Good afternoon. First of all, thank you for Energy Simulations for organizing this event and for giving us the opportunity to present our work here. I'll talk a little bit about the model-based reservoir management in 12 steps. And the, the basic objective of this presentation is talk about the petroleum field management, integrating especially the, with production engineering, uh, integrating the reservoir and production facility, which, the, which is the main topic of the, this chair, but also integrating with economic analysis and geosciences and lab experiments and reservoir simulation in order to develop new methodologies to, and tools to take decisions in the de development and management of petroleum fields. The motivation for this is the uh, simulation of the giant fields from the petroleum pressed out of Brazilian offshore fields. Uh, but we have several challenges. Some of them were, were uh, presented here by Eric and by Leonardo. We have very large reservoirs with uh, complex reservoirs in carbonate uh, rocks. Um, and gas, uh, a lot of gas production because of a high GOR and limitation in the production facilities. Uh, and this, uh, this simulation times is very, also very big. Uh, so we are trying to deal uh, the, with, this re uh, with these problems using a closed loop reservoir development and management. Uh, the same as uh, I, pre I presented here last year. This is divided in four colors. I present here three colors last year. The main objective of this is to select production strategy for the fields. Uh, we have in, in this part here, sorry. Here is the, the reservoir. This green part here is dedicated to build simulation models. For, first of all, we have to use all the data we have to construct these high fidelity models that try to reproduce the most we can the rock and fluid properties. Then, depending on the objective study, we, we simplify this model to simulation models that we call this fit for purpose models to be included in these probabilistic and stochastic approaches we have we are applying. If the models are okay, if they are reproducing the, the field behavior, then we go to this blue part here, which is the long-term production optimization, where the main objective is to select the production strategy for the field. We also include in this process a lot of uncertainties. That's why we have multiple scenarios here representing us all the uncertainties we have in the process. And part of the uncertainties are also the operational noise because we have delays and other problems that sometimes give us biased results for the reservoir simulation. Once we implement this strategy in the field and, and measure the production and fluid man, man, movement in seismic 4D, for example, we include this uh, data measurement noise in this part here. And and then we go to this red part here, which is the data simulation process, that we can change directly the reservoir simulation models here, or we can go into the geologic models and high fidelity models in order to include other characteristics of geological models, the structure and geostatistics and so on. Uh, we, in this year we are including this black part in the top, which is the short term production optimization. Because what we, the decisions we take in this blue part here are long-time decisions. We normally uh, generate here production strategy for the entire life of the field. This is changing automatic. <laughs> and um, yeah, and the, when, when we implement these decision rules, sometimes we, ha we have to correct these decision rules, and, and we do that in the short-term decision. And we are now planning to use data-driven short-term decisions to, be, to complement our model-based long-term uh, decisions. And this is a preparation for the digital technology that the, the companies are using to these pre out fields in Brazil. So there are several ways to implement these closed loop procedures. We are doing this in our group in 12 steps. We divide this in steps because of the complexity of the process. Uh, the two, the colors are the same. The green part is dedicated to build the models, the fit per purpose models, the, the models that have the best relationship between the computational time and quality of the results. 
The red parts are dedicated to calibrate the models. So first we have to calibrate them manually in order to take out the inconsistence of the geologic models and structures and so on. And after that, we include all the uncertainties to generate the scenarios. And we use several techniques to reduce these scenarios using uh, history matching procedures. After we have these models that go get honors the past, then we go to the blue part, which is the generation of the production strategy. We divide this in six steps. Uh, the, um, the main, I will concentrate the, the, the rest of the, the talk today in this blue part here. The, the first thing we do is to select the basic case. And uh, we select a, a production strategy for this case. Uh, I'm, I'm explaining in the next slide that we call this a specialized strategy. After this, we, did, we normally do a risk analysis. And from this risk analysis, we select a, a few representative models for the problem. We optimize all these representative models to see the best strategy for each of these models. And we have some particular elements of these representative models that I'm going to show in the next slides. Uh, after that, we go to step 10, which is an automatic robust optimization procedure. And then we have step 11, where we, we can try to, um, to uh, find manual improvements to these automatic strategies. Uh, among some of the steps we do in this blue part is the integration of production facilities. Normally, we integrate with production facilities in the beginning of the process, in step 6. And then at the end of the process, as I'm going to show you the next slide, in step 11. And the, the last part is to integrate this with short-term decision analysis in the black, step 12. Uh, here's a, a very brief summary of the chair. Uh, we, we have uh, recruited 57 students, 33 graduated, 73. Uh, total, uh, three went for companies, but I hope they can finish yet. We are currently 42 students, and here is as the students were that graduated, sorry, the, the students that graduated in these different colors here, because six of them were dedicated to build these models, seven were dedicated to data simulation procedures with some characteristics, uh, the 18 were dedicated to this blue part of selecting new strategy and new methodologies to, to optimize production, and two of them were dedicated to the whole process and the closed loop procedure. And these are the main uh, sponsors for this problem and the main projects related to these topics, uh, uh, the energy simulation chair, which is the, the top one there. Uh, uh, we, the main sponsors are Petrobras, which mainly are dedicated to uh, to simulate the pre-salt fields in, in Brazil. Shell is also integrating a, in a project, uh, integrating all this data to seismic 4G and representing these heterogeneities in the in the in the pre-south, and we have a project in the consortium of Libra, uh, that is Shell Total, Petrobras, and CNPC, NPC, and OOC, which is the life cycle optimization of uh, this giant field in, in Brazil. And we have a project with ECNOR in the model-based production optimization as well, and financed out of also by FAPESP. And we are developing some te uh, upscaling techniques with Repasol and Sinopec. So I will concentrate the, the main results in the blue part here, step six to 11. We normally divide these in three group of variables, uh, uh, depending on the stage of development of the fields. And the G group one is the, is the design variables where we specify the field, um, the field infrastructure before starting developing of the field. And this is very important in Brazil because the, the pre south fields are new. Uh, we also uh, optimize the group two, which is are the control variables in this process, but we have shown in previous works that we can simplify the optimization of this group when we are developing the fields. Uh, and we intensify the, the optimization of these variables when we go to the management phase. We divide them in, in two. Uh, group two, the long term, and group two, the short term. The long term, normally we try to optimize the decision rules until the end of the life of the field. And the group two in the short term is dedicated to change the, 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 the control rules in a short, short time. 
And this was a demand of the companies because they are changing to digital fuels in Brazil. So we want to have these control rules, but we have to change the rules in the short term uh, period of time. And then we have the group three, which, which we normally call the revitalization variables. And these variables are also very important because the, the, the fields in Presalt are very big. And they, are, they are developing the, the fields in waves. And so when we optimize the first wave, is the group one, but uh, after some years, they have the second wave where, where, where they have infield drills and, and we change some characteristics of the field. And normally we do this using model-based decision, as, as here, but we are also including data-driven analysis to complement these model-based decisions. Basically, we're trying to uh, optimize based on model the decision rules and, uh, and, and change these decisions by uh, correcting the, the control variables in the short-term process. In order to do that, we also created some benchmarks, uh, which uh, some of them are used by several universities and even companies. Unicing one is a Silicic Classic Campus based in black oil model. We have this benchmark in the development phase, management phase, and, and mature field. Uh, the basic idea here is to have a, a, a problem that's very similar to the problem that companies have, but we know the answers. So we have, have developed reference cases which are very fine and with uh, a lot of characteristics different than simulation models. And all the data we collect is from this reference case. And then, based on this data, we have these simulation models. So we can test all the methodologies we are, we are changing here. And the, the same you have for Unicin 2 and Unicin 3. Unicin 2 is a carbonate dual porous decompositional model where we are testing this WAG CO2 injection. We have this field in the development phase and management phase. And now we have this uh, third model, which is a giant field with four sectors in the pre-salt, based on the mirror fields in Brazil, where we are testing uh, the intelligent fields, uh, high sap uh, ICVs, and motor stackling. We also are testing uh, co-flow uh, from the CMG, where we have a case which is very common in Brazil, where we are producing the same production facilities, post-salt silicic classic models, and pre-salt carbonate models, black oil and gem, uh, and, and compositional, all mixed in the same platform. Also, we have some real field applications from the companies that I'm not presenting here today. So uh, I will concentrate my, my results in the blue part, but the green and the red parts are very important. Uh, first of all, the green part uh, is dedicated to build the models, so we are trying to use the most, the most we can, the, the best way we can, the data to build these model, high fidelity models, including all the uncertainties we have in the process, uncertainties in the model, in the economics, fiscal regimes, technology, and so on. So we had to tune the the model in order to have a, a better, good result. And we have a project with Shell and we are testing several model fidelities to see the best fidelity for each type of problem we have. And the red part is dedicated to calibrate this model. I'm not talking too much about this, but we have several results in the past showing that the, what we used to call history matching that we prefer to call data simulation now. Uh, uh, had some problems when we apply this closed loop procedure, especially if we reduce too much the uncertainty based on the uh, past data, then we collapse all the models, and if we do that, we cannot take good decisions for the future. We have some papers that we show this, this problem, so we are trying to develop new ways to, to history matching the problems uh, and uh, use this dynamic data in order to reduce the uncertainties, but not too much. And this is very important for the future of applications of the uh, digital fields. And especially we are doing that integrating not only production data, but also seismic 4G data. Uh, the risk analysis, we, we, we have developed a method to integrate uh, all the uncertainties in the process. As the uncertainties have very different characteristics, we developed this discrete latent hypercube with just statistical realizations. The method has the efficiency of the latent hypercube and preserves the geological consistency of the modules uh, based on the geostatistical methods. 
Uh, we also developed this new way to select these representative models uh, because it is very important not only to preserve the, uh, the variability of the output variables like uh, NPV and oil production, water production, and so on, but it's also important to preserve the, the input distribution of the properties, of the uncertainty properties, and also the behavior of the wells. So we try to find models that can uh, a few models that can preserve all the variability of the, of the process. Uh, when we have that, these uh, representative models, we uh, select this, what we call a specialized strategy, which is the best strategy we can select for each of the representative models. We can uh, uh, use any optimization method to do that using multi-objective function. And we also have the robust optimization where we try to optimize all the representative models at the same time. And then at the end, we are gonna compare both technologies. Uh, we have some papers that we compare these two techniques. Uh, we have shown that robust optimization is very good uh, uh, when we, ha we have the best average results. Uh, but when we apply that to the reference case and including all the uncertainties, these differences are not so, so big. And the specialized strategies are very good because we, I know the best strategy for each representative model. And when I compare these strategies, I can uh, extract this information to estimate the value of flexibility, value of information, and chance of success. Also, we use these representative models to integrate with the production facilities. And when we do that, we have some additional parameters like uh, diameter, gas lift, platform positions, and so on. As we have n new variables, we, we are developing methodologies to optimize all this at the same time, including the reservoir and the production facilities. Here at the right, I have an example where we, sorry, where we optimize each of the representative models in this way. And after that, we apply this to the reference model, which, which is here. And, and, and when we optimize these representative models, we increase the chance of success for the reference model of the real case. Uh, last year, I presented uh, an application of, uh, of this integration of production facilities and, and reservoirs, uh, trying to use this simulation of the separation of water and oil in the subsea, reinjecting the water for the, in, the, in the reservoir and producing only the oil or the, the, most, uh, the less water we can. And this year, we are testing this, the same concept, but to simulate the high sap, which is the separation of gas liquid separate in the, in the subsea, reinjecting the CO2 and the gas into the reservoir and producing only the oil to the platform. And this is very important and, and it's being tested in Brazil because the platforms have limitation in the gas production and this will limit the oil production. So they are considering using this and we are trying to measure the benefits of doing this uh, in the, uh, for the reservoir. And we are using CoFlow for that. And we have also another application of the CoFlow in the poster section for the heavy oil field. And the, mo the most recent results we have for the integration of production facilities uh, is that, uh, the, first of all, we try to develop uh, some indicators for companies and for universities to, to know when it's important to integrate and when it's not necessary. So basically, we, we have indicators that are based on the bottom hole pressure. If you compare the bottom hole pressure in a case where the, we have only the reservoir being simulated and this reservoir with the production facilities, we can have some indicators to, to show us if it, this integration is important or not. After we do this, we have tested the, this influence of the integration in the development phase, in the production forecast, and also in the field management. Some cases that are always necessary to integrate is when we have multiple reservoir producing to the same production facilities. Then the, the, the result is much better in these cases. And also when we have very complex production system, like the examples I showed here, where, where in the high sap, uh, 
then I can simulate complex process in the production facilities and the influence of that in the, in the simulation. Uh, and another example of application of this code flow is what we are doing for this uh, Unisync tree, which is the, uh, this giant field of four sectors, where we are emulating in the production facilities how the, wag separa how the uh, gas oil separation and reinjecting this into the reservoir. And then allow us to test how this and, uh, uh, inflow control valves and uh, separation of gas, uh, high sap, gas reinjects, so everything we can simulate in this. And, and in particular, we use CoFlow in this example only for the production facilities and, and we use JAM for the simulation. And now they have CoFlow X that probably we're going to test soon to, to test this type of procedure. So as a conclusion, I presented here a process with a closed loop reservoir development and management with integration with the geoscience production facilities and economic analysis. We have shown in the previous years, the, the, some recent years, several results showing the benefits of this methodology, including uncertainties and probabilistic analysis. Uh, I focus here on the blue steps, which is the main uh, focus of the, the chair here, uh, dividing the field management and the development management revitalization variables, try to optimize the long-term decision rules and short-term integration with data-driven corrections. And the integration of production facilities, uh, we, we, we are trying to develop some techniques to, sh to show when it's necessary to integrate. Uh, I didn't present today, but I presented last year because in the beginning the explicit coupling was giving a lot of oscillations. We reduced these oscillations in the past by several techniques that we, are, we are have in our articles. And this year we concentrate in testing the, this implicit solution in, in CoFlow, comparing the results with the explicit coupling we have in, in the past. The main applications for the compass now for this integration is the subsea water oil and gas liquid separation and the simulation of multiple reservoirs at the same time to the same platform conditions. So with that, uh, I would like to acknowledge our main sponsors, mainly Energy, Petrobras, Shell, Equinor, Repsol, Sinopec, and Brazilian government and some other companies. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I would be glad to answer the questions. Thank you. Questions, please. Hi, Kawe Degani from Chevron. A fantastic presentation. A couple thank of you. questions, okay. So uh, you're doing closed loop, uh, uh, I guess, history matching. Is it the is it the big loop or small loop? Is I, it uh, are you going back to the I guess you know uh, your geologic uh, parameters when you're doing history match or you're doing it only on production? Okay, I have um, we we have tried both options. I have the big big loop here. Mm -hmm. uh, in this step here, we test if it's necessary to go into the big loop or not. Uh, it depends on the stage of the development of the field and depends also on the main variables that will influence the history matching. But what our main challenge is to history match the images of the reservoir that represent the petrophysical properties like porosity, permeability, and so on. We have a special methods that was developed by Petrobras to do that, and, and several universities and companies are using that, the SMDA. We have tested this in the closed loop procedures. We had some surprise because the, the reduction of the uncertainties were very, were, were very high and the collapsing some of the models. So we are trying to develop some techniques not to collapse the models, all, all models together. We have two posters on that. Yeah. On the, the uh, but the question is that, uh -huh. okay, so how do you parameterize your geologic parameters? Is it through a multitude of geologic models, or is it through parameterization of, uh, you know, geologic uh, properties? Okay. Uh, depending on the reservoir, depending on the characteristics, we can do both. We have techniques that use block by block using this method that I was mentioning, and we have also some techniques that we use geostatistical analysis 
to uh, to condition we we have a special method we combine in Latin hypercubian just statistic then we select the best images of the reservoir petrophysical properties for example and then we go back to the big loop and generate new images very close to that image using this uh, as a secondary image for that but we so, can, we have so, both yeah. yeah so naturally i guess you know when you are selecting those models has to be based on, I suppose, oil in place and connectivity, some sort of a connectivity scenario uh, in your reservoir, which is, I guess, you know, uh, maybe recovery, or is it pure based on MPV? The, the representative models, you're saying? Yeah. Uh, the representative models we select on all the indicators we have. Uh, so it's basic. We have this uh, so the, the gross plots. So yeah. all the, the output variables like NPV, oil production, water production are preserved. The, the variability is preserved. The risk curves of each of the objective functions also oh. is preserved. And also the input, the PDF or the inputs are preserved. For example, if I have a distribution in all my of any properties in my models, I try to preserve this PDF in, in the representative models and also the well behaviors. So we have an optimization procedure to select these representative models. Okay. Um, one more last question. Mm -hmm. When you're doing optimization on your, uh, I guess, you know, the different scenarios, uh, are you using, uh, I guess, algorithms, uh, mathematical algorithms for your optimization because you have multi-objective functions? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you handle that? This is another topic of research we, we do in several ways, but the method I particularly pre uh, prefer is a method that we de develop, develop in-house, where we use Latin Empire Cube. We try, uh, uh, so, uh, we have several generations. It's like a genetic algorithm, but more focused on the, the best solutions. It's faster than genetic algorithm. It's something like, if like this. genetic algorithm, that means you do, the, I guess, you know, have all these objective functions together as one objective function, right? You know, for example, whatever it is that you're trying to optimize. I don't know, number of wells, you know, in field, wherever. You're combining all of them in one objective function? It can be one or it can be more than one. We have multi-objective functions as well. We, we can combine them given weights for the for several objective functions at the same time, or we can use Pareto rules or some other techniques to do that. Yeah, we are doing research in all these topics, so, uh, but normally we combine all the, the objective functions in one and optimize this, this one objective function, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Michael, you got a question? Yes, I do. Hi, thanks for your presentation. Michael Cronin with Penn State. Mm -hmm. I really like the coupling of the reservoir description with the midstream and facilities. Could you use this, this approach to look at um, HSC concerns with, say, subsea equipment failure, maximum discharge type scenarios? Yes, I, I believe we can. We are improving nowadays our in-house software to do that, but we also have CoFlow and other software that we can do. Everything we can do in these soft commercial softwares that can emulate all these uh, things we can include in our, in our process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Richard? Okay, I'll keep it short. But um, I just wanted you, like you brought up an interesting point that it kind of goes back from my shell days, but um, you, you said you wanted a short-term loop and a long-term loop, and, and I've struggled with that a lot over the years, and I, I wanted to know how you defined it, and also there's, there's lots of times you trade short-term profit for long-term recovery. Like, how do you think you're going to manage that, or is that beyond what you're investigating? Okay. Uh, uh, until last year, we were using only the long-term production optimization, uh, and then the main objective of, was the uh, optim optimization of an uh, objective function, which is the NPV for the whole life of the reservoir. But then the companies start challenging us that the, the, this, these decision rules that are uh, set up for the reservoir for a long time are never applied in practice in, in companies. So they are starting challenging us if we could change these decision rules for short-term decisions that can really apply in the, in the field in a real-time application. So 
In order to do that, we are trying to combine these uh, simulation models that normally are good for long term, but not very good for short time, with data, data analysis, data-driven analysis, where we can correct our decision rules with short-term control rules. We don't have many results on this because we are just starting this, this year, but that's the objective of the project we have with Petrobras from, from next year on. They want to develop new techniques for history match for short time, short time not uh, objective for a long time. They want the model to be good for the next week, for next month, for example, not for 20 years from now. And they want to use this model really to take decisions on how they're going to control the, the fields in, in practice. So we are trying to develop new techniques. The models for long term normally are not very good for short term. We are trying to see what we can do to, to change that. Okay. Once again, thank you, Dr. Skioser. Thank you. And we still have another presenters today.